Okay. Uh, once again, uh, <coughs> a lightning talk by Code Syntax. Uh, I am Luis Cho. Okay, so uh, the title of uh, today's uh, presentation is the Eibar Tarrak, that's, that's the people from Eibar, those gun toting ruffians. <laughs> so uh, pr probably you expected when coming here to find some uh, Spanish uh, seaside uh, resort. Uh, also, there were uh, uh, sea images in the propaganda distributed. Well, it was, it was totally fake. <laughs> this is the grim reality. <laughs> Fuck. But Eibar uh, uh, is pretty, pretty Eibar. Uh, up to a point, or to say it better, uh, above a point, because we, we live uh, there in the hole, and some cows live in the, uh, in the, in the mountains, as the plain, uh, main page of Plonkov uh, shows. There's a, that's Eibartarra also, that's another uh, inhabitant of Eibar, but it's a cow. Okay, so uh, we live in, in this hole. Uh, this marvel of uh, architecture, and uh, urbanism, as you can see, it's uh, all packed uh, here. But uh, well, this, this has uh, historical reasons. And this is the main one. This is uh, some years ago in 1937, when the Francoist fascist bombardments uh, erased the whole town, except the church and some other houses, and also the, the, the Renaissance Palace of Marques Cua, where uh, the training, the training uh, season, uh, sessions are taking, are taking place. So uh, as it was destroyed, destroyed uh, uh, then we rebuilt this old packed, horrible uh, uh, city in purpose. It's, uh, it's made in purpose. So going back, uh, but anyway, it's the people that matters. Uh, these are friends of Lurri Bargucci. <laughs> <laughs> in the carnival or favor, uh, it, it has a, a funny carnival. In, well, it, it moves. It's uh, uh, February or March, it depends. And look at the soldiers, the green soldiers from Toy Story. Uh, look at the, at the platform for, for horizontality. Very, very nice. <laughs> and they are, they are, tot they are uh, toting guns as well. Because that's very, that's very much from Avar, as this picture shows. They can't talk in Eibar people. So, why? Well, uh, the first, uh, well, I, I suppose there are living people living in this uh, hole a lot of time, but uh, a Castilian uh, king in the 14th century gave a chart uh, this year uh, creating officially the, the town of Eibar with the name of uh, Villanueva de San Andres uh, de Eibar. That, that was the original, official Castilian name of, of this town. And that's the reason, that's the reason we have an X here, it's because someone asked me, actually, what, 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 what is this X that uh, every, everybody, yes, yes, what is this X that everybody, oh, it appears all over the town? Well, it's not an X. It's the, it's the cross of San Andres, it's the cross of Saint Andrew, which also, it was a martyr that was, uh, 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 was martyred in a very uh, fashionable way in that that kind of cross. It also appears in the in the flag of uh, in the flag of uh, Scotland. That's Saint Andrew's cross, and the and the green cross in the Basque flag also is the is the cross of Saint Andrew, and also it's the symbol of the town. The, this this X. It's not an X. It's Saint Andrew's cross. Okay, but back back to the this little town of the 14th century. Okay, you can see a river there. But probably you notice that there is no river now <laughs> in Eibar. Well, it's below the houses and the streets. That's, that's where the river is, because uh, it's, a, it's a hole. 
And then we, you have seen also the, the slopes. Uh, they are not good for anything. The, you, there's no agriculture or productive agriculture here. Also, no. Uh, so this, it's intrinsically a very poor uh, geographical area. Very, very, dif very difficult to, to thrive here. But somehow the town thrived. And there's, there's, a, there's a theory, well, economic theory, or what, something that we, uh, the Eibar Tarek people, uh, like to say is that uh, here there's no way to earn one's living if not being very creative. And the thing is that from the, not that century, but the next century, from the 15th century, a very specific industry uh, 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 thrift here was created here in, an, in another very uh, nearby town, uh, uh, Plantia. Uh, where, no, no, I have, there is, I have a colleague from Plantia, but it's not, it's not here. Okay. And that, well, that's the gunnery, the arms industry. Uh, from the 15th century on, uh, Eibar has been, until the 20th century, mainly dedicated to uh, making guns. Making guns for the Spanish armies, um, not for personal use. And there's a museum. There's a very nice museum if you like guns. Okay, so that was my dad's first job, actually, making pistols at the BH Company, Beistegi Hermanos, the Beistegi Brothers Company. Uh, the building is still there. Five minutes walk from here, and that was his first job, making guns. Uh, the industry still exists today, but it's a niche industry. They make really mainly make uh, gunshots, but uh, luxury luxury gunshots for uh, Arabian sheikhs, some very expensive ones. So it's a, it's a expo export export industry mainly. And that's compact, but it's it's a it's a Laurona gunshot. The, the, the Basque. The Basque, uh, the Basque uh, brand was, was Lauron until recently, okay? And so it is an industry that st still craves uh, for the very, very rich. And there's also an, an associated uh, 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 art uh, with it. It's an engraving uh, over black iron, engraving with uh, gold. And it's, it's, a, it's called the Damascene engraving. Uh, Damascene from Damascus, the city of uh, Syria. Uh, but uh, well, it's, uh, it, in here it's called the Damascene engraving, and this actually, this pistol actually was not sold. It's in the, it's in the museum, and it's a work by my uncle, uh, Miguel Fernandez. So if you can make guns, uh, you can make other things, because a, a gun is a tube of metal. That's that's a, that's a gun basically. So in the Beginning of the 20th century, they began uh, making, giving other uses to tubes of metal to make bikes. That was the, the first uh, industry uh, uh, evolution uh, in the beginning of the 20th century because they are tubes of, of, uh, of metal. And also the other component of a gun are extra metal pieces, the trigger and the, the I don't know, safety click or whatever, and these little pieces of, of metal that are bent. And also from that industry, doing those things for guns, other industries uh, were uh, created. These are ma magnificent uh, examples of uh, Basque uh, designs made in Avar that they are, they are on, also purchasable, pu purchasable right now in, in the, in the in, in shops and, and so on. It's a, uh, yeah, you know, that. Uh, a, a, des a design by uh, David Olañeta, 1932. And the staple, uh, the staple uh, El Casco brand, uh, that, that design was patented in 1934 by Jose Olazabal and, no, Jose Solo and Jose. Jose Olave. Uh, they, they have been made. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the, uh, the corkscrew. The corkscrew are still made five minutes from here. And when I say five minutes, 
I mean five minutes, literally, not ten. <laughs> and, and, the, and the El Casco staplers, uh, the most elegant in the world, and also the most expensive nowadays, you can buy them also, uh, they, were, they were made right, right over the corner, in a factory right over the corner of the, the theater, right there. But now, now the company is still uh, uh, thri thriving, but they have the company in a nearby town. And uh, they are the best staplers in the world. Alum aluminium, not soldiered uh, pieces. All, all are... Okay. So after doing guns, we still could do things with creativity and design. And over the 20th century, there, there, there was a whole kilometer zero economy in Eibar. Uh, lots of things were done locally. All these uh, appliances were made in Eibar and they were at my home when I was a child. And if not that, the fridge was from 100 kilometers from the Basque Country, Supercell from Navarra, and, uh, and the washing machine, Ochain, was from Bergara, 15 kilometers from here. And well, well this, that was, this was not at my home, but it was at the, at the hairdressers. Okay, sorry. An hydraulic uh, barber uh, seat. And there was a, even a, a company called Helpholz Electronics. They were, they were Basque, but they took the name from a, a German uh, scientist that uh, uh, linked uh, uh, electricity with sound waves, and they created a clone of the Hammond uh, 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 organ, an uh, electronic uh, Hammond, uh, uh, counter engineering it. And they also created some t uh, TV sets, but they were a 10 per a ten person little uh, uh, factory, and uh, well, they didn't success. And they didn't success, and the town didn't success this way either. After the 70s, it was a decline. Uh, uh, they built, they built a, a highway above the town, but the factories below became empty. No more metal bending here anymore. Metal bending is down, is down now, mainly in Asia, I think. So we had to reinvent ourselves, and still we do great bikes. The companies of BH or Orbea, uh, they were originally were uh, gun makers, uh, both of them, and they are not actually here. They are in other towns in the Basque Country that have good access and, and a flat, uh, big uh, warehouses. So. Uh, trucks can come, go, and, uh, because here it's impossible. So, but they are quite maybe, and they are, they are alive, these companies also. And there have been some, some other, we are still inventive, I think. For instance, this thing was invented by a bus company uh, from Eibar, G93, invented real-time cycling tracking. This, this looks like uh, trivial uh, technology nowadays, you see, each, 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 motor, each motorbike in a peloton has a, a phone, and you can triangulate the times with the, F, the GPS, and you, get, and you get the difference in time from, uh, well, the, uh, uh, this, this cyclist was here at that moment, and then uh, and, uh, from that point another cyclist comes. But it, this was done in the 90s with GPS attached to radio transmitters, and the radio transmitter signals were uh, decoded uh, in a local computer, and uh, it was done first in some Basque races, and the Tour de France didn't believe it could work, but they came here and saw, and they were the first uh, big customer for this company. And now it's, uh, uh, you see it everywhere, and not only in this sport, in other, in other sports, and before internet, eh? it was invented, this. Mm -hmm. And also, of course, plow. Uh, uh, Code syntax does plow. We didn't invent it, almost, but uh, <laughs> it's fully internationalized, thanks, thanks to Mikel Larrategui, uh, our, uh, well, no, the Plone International Team Lead. That's, that's, that's your official title. Thank, thank you for doing uh, Plone uh, multilingual and Basque, by the way. Uh, so we resist. We, Eva reinvents itself somehow. 
uh, it's the people that matters. Uh, gun toting ruffians. We, that not, not, not much hardware guns anymore, any, and we don't need guns. I am from the banning of the guns, of course. And I prefer to be cool, creative software tool makers. That, that's what we want to be, yeah? more, than, more than gun makers. So, thank you. Skerry Casco. One precision, one precision. Well, they, they are not ruffians. They are, they are uh, people from Eibar in a shooting, aiming uh, contest in the Probaderua of Eibar. The Probaderua, the, it, it's a particular uh, institution of this town, is the testing site. Because uh, all guns need quality control, obviously, before they, they get to the market. Someone has to test it, not, not to lose a hand on the or at least you, you lose your hand and not the clients, because that's, that's more problematic. <laughs> so uh, every, every factory, they didn't test their guns individually, but there was a common organization, the testing site, and all guns were passed through there. It was in the center of the town 100 years ago when this picture was taken, but now it's in, a, it's in the outskirts, in a, a 200 meters from, from code syntax, and and still, the, the guns of, of Eibar, the niche, the niche product of today, it, they are proved there in the, in the, in the testing site. So that's uh, the precision. And also, a uh, 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 kind of reminder, uh, uh, then uh, at, at the party, if you go, uh, in case of uh, panic, <laughs> Thank you, Lucio. Philip Bauer, the next one. Thank you. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. It's working. Hello. Sorry, it's coming. Any minute now? Perhaps the other one? <laughs> Nicolas, tu avais raison. Hein. Can you switch the laptop with the other one? And... Huh? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, nice. No, it's the wrong screen. Where's my mouse? So uh, <clears throat> I uh, will pro uh, present you my uh, extension for Chrome. I developed uh, in, in, in the last uh, months. Uh, this extension is called um, Shortcut uh, Pattern Bookmark. And I think <clears throat> it will be ease uh, your life as developer because uh, it's a collection of um, bookmark based on pattern. So uh, if you are in the, in the in a prone site, you can access directly uh, to the ZME by clicking on the link, or you can also uh, access the uh, export content. Um, it's work uh, on, uh, on uh, also on the on the production side, yep. so I can access uh, portal catalog, for example. Uh, and work also on uh, Volto. 
So uh, how it works, uh, you can um, add a new shortcut here. You have the name and the pattern here, and uh, the pattern is based on the keyword here. Uh, <clears throat> you can also uh, uh, import or export uh, um, settings and uh, uh, rename, uh, change the, the settings, or change the order on, or delete. And you can also uh, set up um, the, the port for a site, a root site detection. Um, voilà. And uh, this extension is uh, available on the um, uh, web store of Chrome from uh, t uh, this morning. Uh, I will post the, the link uh, on uh, Discord uh, just after the uh, presentation. Voilà. Thank you. Philip, next, Eric Still. Okay, the Germans are at it again. Uh, we're having a Plone event in Germany next week, uh, next year, sorry, uh, at the Justus Liebig University in Gießen. If you don't know where Gießen is, it is uh, located there next to Frankfurt. Can you see Frankfurt? No. It's uh, below the red dot, it's about a half, half an hour from Frankfurt, so easily accessible. Uh, the plan tagging will be on the first, uh, 4th of March until the 6th of March, and directly afterwards uh, there's going to be a sprint for, uh, for two days. Um, yes, it has a river and a bridge, which is important for plone events, and it's a meeting of the German-speaking plone community, but uh, don't worry if you don't speak German, come give an English talk, they're very welcome to, we'll welcome to have them. Uh, happy to have them, whatever. Uh, this is another very beautiful picture of Gießen to uh, invite you there. That's basically it. And one more thing. Uh, so this is the website, plontagung.de, obviously Plon Classic, bit old one. This is the university. This is actually Plon 6. Looks a bit dated, but we just migrated it to Plon 6. Uh, Mike uh, Destap and me, who's, Mike is organizing most of it. Um, yes, that's it. One more thing, uh, completely different. Uh, do you see this here? Yay. So there is a... It's not, not fake, so this is uh, the same here. Uh, there's a pull request and people are working on it and there's the only two things that are failing were tests in Plon REST API and Plon API, but they're fixed now, even the robot tests pass, so it should be uh, a matter of uh, days, basically. And uh, we can have Plon, um, uh, Python 3.12 uh, support. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. David Glick, next one. This does something, right? <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. It's magic. Not magic enough. There we go. Okay. All right. Uh, so, yeah, I want to call out somebody, um, kind of an unsung hero. Um, somebody I talked to this week. Uh, so 
Uh, this person has stepped up to fill a vital role for Plown, uh, largely doing it entirely on their own. Uh, they're involved in several other major initiatives in the community. Um, they have lots of other passion projects on their to-do list, but really no time. Um, all while maintaining a day job and finding time with their loved ones. Uh, could you stand up? There should be at least eight of you in the audience. <laughs> no? Okay. Uh, we have a lot of these people. Uh, these are single points of failure. Uh, thank you, David. Um, <laughs> I needed a picture. Uh, is this a crisis? It, it kind of is. It's a safety thing. Uh, it's a community problem. We have a lot of these people who are the one person running a project, the one person in charge of a thing that don't have backup, uh, and uh, heavily involved in running our teams, uh, but they're also deeply involved in other aspects. And we're leaning very heavily on them, and that risks burnout uh, and puts the entire entirety of Plone at risk. Um, if Moritz gives in to the, that bubbling cauldron of rage that we all know lives inside of him, destroys his computer, and flees to the mountains, Yes, exactly. Uh, I mean, we will survive, but it's going to take a lot of time to rebuild that knowledge and find the people to take over for him. It's going to take at least five people, um, at least. Um, so, I mean, this isn't just a Plum problem, this is an, it, it, and it's not just an open source problem. It's, it, uh, it, it happens everywhere, uh, but it is one you should be worried about. Um, but it is also one that we can fix. Um, this, this can have a business impact for you, though. Uh, if infrastructure problems slow down development or releases take longer or documentation lags behind uh, what we're producing, that slows down what you can do. Um, it's a problem. But again, it's a problem you can help solve. So obviously cloning would be great, but if we had two Freds, they would debate each other to death, um, and <laughs> we don't want that. Uh, and, and the other thing is we, we get no diversity of opinion. Uh, we used to have something called the 10% Manifesto, which was um, the company Yarn uh, was urging everybody to pledge 10% of all their, all their time to giving back to the community. Uh, and so that wound up being two days a month where they were basically pouring all of their effort into building community efforts. Um, I am asking for one day a month uh, for our plan tune-up. Um, so what you get out of that, um, there's some education involved. You get to learn shit. Uh, you get a glowing sense of accomplishment. Uh, you get a voice in the community. I think that's super important. Uh, you get to have a say in what we do, how we do it, uh, where it happens, and where we're going. Uh, you get a robust, better, and continuing plone. Um, and uh, the nerds get to build all that cool stuff that they don't get a chance to do right now. The things we need, I mean, obviously coders are great, but we have a lot of them. Um, what we need from your companies are really the things like project management, uh, content creation and editing, translation, uh, outreach and publicity, uh, infrastructure, DevOps. Uh, people who are bad at Plone are extremely valuable to us. If, if you don't have, if, if everybody at your company doesn't fit into one of all these categories, we'll find a place for them. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're having tune-ups. Uh, it's essentially a day of working on Plone, uh, whether that's core, that's uh, add-ons, or all the bits that go around it. Um, so that's the third Friday of every month. Um, and we'll be making, uh, so this, this will take you to a form where you can kind of say, this is what I can do or can't do. Um, uh, you, or you can just send me an email and we'll find a place for you. Please do one or the other or both. One minute. OK. Uh, and we will be sending out announcements in the near future uh, talking about what our teams actually need. So all right, thank you. Uh, and I'll say, you don't need to be one of these superheroes, but that would be great. But like, we just need people. So thanks. <laughs>
Okay, so I'm taking a page from Erico. Uh, one of the great things about being an open source community is we get to work in the open and share what we're doing. And John Stahl taught me a long time ago that a lot of times you have ideas of things you'd like to see built and maybe you don't have time to, uh, or expertise to do it yourself. Um, so the best thing then is not to just leave it in your head, but actually throw it out there into the world, describe it, and hope that somebody else sees the same uh, vision and will take it up. So this is a dump of things from my to-do list that I haven't gotten to for a while. Wouldn't it be great if in Volto uh, you could start typing and type a quote and it would automatically turn it into the fancy, uh, you know, the, the right quote in German or the curly quotes for English or whatever. You type two dashes and you get M dash like we're used to from Slack and other tools uh, would be great. Uh, it'd be nice to have progressive uploads with a progress bar in Volto. We already have support for it in the REST API. I think some people maybe have done some work on it, uh, but it should just be there uh, out of the box. Would be great. I'd like to build a page and clone and export it as Markdown so I can put it somewhere else or take a page and Markdown from the documentation and paste it into Volto. Get blocks. I'd love to have uh, commenting f for editors, like uh, discussing revisions to a document like you can in Google Docs. ChatGPT is uh, generative clone text, so uh, start a new page and ask ChatGPT to fill in, uh, create some content for you about a particular topic as a starting point. I think it would be great if Plone came out of the box with a dashboard for editors to see content you added recently, content that hasn't been revised in a long time, content that needs translations, uh, other reports on things that might need attention in the site. We used to have this dashboard of portlets in Classic, but we don't quite have the same thing these days. And it would be nice to have something that you don't have to configure every time. Zope and Plone put these weird restrictions on naming things. If you've ever tried to create a page called image, can't do it because there's an image field. If you try to name something the same as a catalog index, you can't do it. This is a little bit tricky one digging in the depths of Zope, but it would sure be nice if we uh, made that not an issue. Collective.exportimport is great. You can export everything from a site, put it somewhere else. But if you try to check in the export into Git, you have this giant file, and then you make some changes, and you make a new commit, and Git says, oh, sorry, too big, I can't show you the differences. So it'd be cool if you could export as maybe a zip file that contains a bunch of one file for each item, something like this. Uh, it'd be cool to have a Docker image created from uh, the core dev build out with, with the core packages, their current versions, if we make new releases of packages or make commits that haven't been released yet, still put them in the image. That way you have a way to test any package with the pending set of changes that haven't been released. It does? Okay, thing I learned, cool. Uh, Erico says it exists. And not, nightly is sort of what I mean, but I mean every change. Um, finally, uh, if you're running commands in Docker or you're running commands in Zope, you can do the same things, but you have to run different commands. Uh, in Docker, you can specify nice env environment variables to get things. You can't do that outside of Docker. It'd be cool if we just had one uh, command line application that was exactly the same. And I'm done, so. <laughs> Elizabeth and Martin, Erico next. Ah, 
ici sur le coup. Emilio is finalist of OSORA Awards 2023. What is uh, OSORA? It's the Open Source Observ Observatory of the, the European Commission, uh, who promotes uh, the use of uh, free and open source software in Europe, especially in public sector. And its awards um, honor the best uh, software, open source software solutions uh, for public administration. Um, so, uh, Joël, our, ICT, our IT or CTO of EMEO, uh, submitted uh, the candidacy of uh, our public IT company because uh, we serve uh, more than 1,400 local authorities in Wallonia. Uh, that involve uh, police and fire service, so on and so on. And our products are mainly based on Prone, uh, Django, and Odoo. Uh, this year, um, uh, there were uh, 101 candidates from uh, 23 countries, and EMEO is among the 22 uh, finalists. So, uh, now we need you uh, to win the award. Uh, this award uh, will allow us to promote uh, the planned community governance model. So, uh, please uh, vote for us. I will put the link on Discord. So, it's just a little tricky to uh, sign in, so just don't be afraid. Maybe you have to refresh your page once you're logged in. Thank you. Eriko, next kid, next. No, no, it's working. I asked for a translator. Brazilian translator? Yes. Canadian Brazilian translation. Hello, so I'm going to talk quickly about the board election and uh, the nomination, pro uh, nomination process because it was not clear yesterday, some people had questions. So how it works, there's this page explaining everything. You have still one hour, 12 minutes to submit your nomination. Oh, is that enough time? Yes, it is, if you need a hand look for me or can we help you. Uh, the process is quite simple. You go to the nomination page, log in, add a new board nomination, upload an image, write who are you, why you, can, uh, uh, you could join the board. And it's really important, it's more about willing to help than, oh, I'm not good enough. And so please, please help and submit. We are going to have an election process that's going to start uh, today at uh, 20 hours here, uh, our local time. Just to explain, uh, the nomination page is this one. So these are the current candidates. All good candidates because we have only good people in this community, right? And there's space if you want to help, don't be afraid. Oh, but they are so awesome. Yes, everyone is awesome. Just put your name in there as well if you're willing to help. You're going to uh, all the currently 99 active Plone Foundation members are going to receive a link to a page that will look like that. You're going to add the candidates in the order you prefer them to be there. So you add everyone in the order Tomorrow around 1, uh, 3 p.m., we are going to finish this, close the election, and then we are going to announce the new board later during that day, during the board meeting, right? The annual membership meeting. Now, can you translate what I said, just to be sure? Uh, 
Uh, one thing I did want to say, seriously, is that, uh, as you can see, there are more candidates than we have seats on the board for, but that's all right, because what we want is for you to think about your being able to help at that level. It's not that anybody on this board is any smarter than any one of you. It's more like we, we know the community, we've been part of the community, we care about the community, and we need you to listen to problems or maybe hear, talk to people that you know in the community and listen for problems that you can then try to solve at that level. That is, the board, as you know, does not direct development. The board just advises and the board tries to coordinate and solve problems in a very light touch way. Again, uh, it's import important we have elections. If it, this is your first time, it's kind of, I want to help, but I have no idea. Put your name. I did that back in 2011. I thought I had no chance at all. There were this bunch of uh, people. We had a really good election, and I was considering like, okay, I'm putting my name so people at least read it first time, and then it happens at so, uh, some other point. So see you one hour. We are going to be around. Talk to us. We can help you. And now, before he buzzes me, we have King Nguyen talking about sponsorship. You want to read that up? Oh, you, just, oh, you, you want? It. No, I'll plug it in. Oh, no, it's come on. on. Get no, get don't. Get out of the way. It's you. Get out. No, come on. Get, get, off, get off the board. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, and uh, next friend. <laughs> the, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention about the election is that, um, again, going back to how many seats there are on the board, if you don't happen to get voted in this particular time, please don't get discouraged. Um, we're, we're trying to make sure that it's not a popularity contest, because, I mean, look, <laughs> it's not a popularity contest. Um, so, so please, uh, if you don't get voted in this time, just keep talking to people, still be interested, and then next year, put your name in again. Um, I guess I don't have a working... Oh, maybe I'll switch to the other report. Yes. MacBooks are great. Uh, oh, that's the problem. Okay. And it's on the wrong screen. This going to work. Ah, there we go. Uh, I think you know this website. So the thing I wanted to talk to you about is um, Plum Foundation sponsorship. Um, we have a number of sponsors um, that we try to recognize on our site, and um, uh, to a certain extent, I did a poor job this year of keeping this uh, list up to date on this website. Um, but beyond that, um, I really want you to understand that some of the things that are possible for us are paid for by the money that you, by our, by the money that our sponsors provide. And some of those sponsors are uh, these, I guess, we have levels of sponsorship just to recognize the different amounts of money that the sponsors provide. So these are the companies that have been providing the most amount of, of financial support for the foundation. Um, we also have other levels of uh, uh, sponsorship, which are, <clears throat> the complete list is on this page. And we, of course, also have um, individual sponsors, which the list that uh, Erico had yesterday, the screenshot with the faces, that's from our GitHub sponsors, but we used to have a, we still have it, but we're trying to transition over to GitHub. But we have other uh, sponsors who have been on PayPal for, in some cases, years. Um, so even if your company doesn't um, have the ability to provide financial sponsorship to the Pound Foundation, please consider uh, giving us a few dollars a month, and that helps uh, run some very expensive servers that Fred and Erico put together for us. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you, tell you about, is we have, um, beyond just clone sponsors, we have providers, uh, we have you know, as you know, most of you work for a company or an organization that provides plumb services, and um, there's a lot of overlap between sponsors and providers, but what we wanted to do this year is um, open up this list of plumb service providers 
to all of you. There's no need to provide any money. We just want your name and your URL up there. Um, we went through a couple of iterations. This is one of the reasons why we wanted, I want to see more change on the board. We want to try new ideas. Um, this is an idea that um, Erico pushed uh, this past year, and it's something that I completely agree with, that we need to have all of you listed here so that we can start redividing you up by geographic area or by sector so that people who come to Plone.org can find the provider that's closest to their needs. So please uh, contact us uh, somewhere on here. We have a link. Or just email me or whatever. Talk to me, and uh, I'd love to put you up there. Thank you. So, um, a bit more serious talk today, um, continuing with um, Eric's talk. Um, in Dutch, we have this saying calling man and horse um, the website team. Please, uh, so, oh, in Eric's intonation, then, you know that we have a website team in the Plone Community Foundation. Uh, no, we don't, actually. And to give you a bit of an overview of how we are with uh, activism in the blown community. We've got the AI team, I'm the team lead. Uh, we do everything up until the website hosting, uh, but we should not build websites. We've got the marketing team, they fill the content on the website. They do all kinds of publications, social media, news items, success stories. Uh, this year we have a great Plone.com website again. <laughs> which was built by Code Syntax people, so they theme it, they build it, they filled it. Uh, it's a yearly instance, and kind of Eric Comey, me, uh, uh, Kim and Paul provided the infrastructure for that. And of course, we've got the whole release team, photo team, release managers, and many, many permissors here who develop Core Plone. But who actually maintains and extends the Plone Org website setup? So this is a bit awkward. Nobody does. So th there should be at least 50 or more capable Plone developers in this hall right now who can maintain and extend Plone websites, I hope, and do that for a living. <laughs> How many minutes do I have to keep this here? Four, three, four minutes, three more minutes. Okay, cool. So, I mean, members from the other teams, as you see, are standing in here, but we're few and we're already doing all the other things that you saw and as, and as Eric already did. So, Plone.org is not a project. I mean, you have to say this to customers all the time when they come for a website project. There's not a beginning and there's not an end date. There's not like, oh, project done and we'll see you in three years or fire and forget. This is an ongoing business. And we, we, the teams that provided this had great help in 2022 from Planistas and integrators and companies setting up the new website. And we got it there, greatly appreciated. But after that, activism and interest, interest has been like, like one or two percent. Just go, go to the Plone Org repository and check the commits there. You'll see Erico, you'll see me, you'll see a few other people. And, and this is actually our public relations uh, for Plone.org at the moment. if we continue like this. So you need we. I mean, we've had some active community members there. Thank you, Erico, Brian Davis, David Glick, Victor Mauritz, Rico Pekka, and others. I'm forgetting that they did help some bit from the other teams. But we really need a small pool of available developers with a little bit of time every month to help regularly with supporting uh, and extending our, our main own uh, 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 business card that we show. So what do we ask? Maybe two, four, 12 hours a month of your time, uh, attend the team meeting once a month, um, an occasional mini sprint, and once you know the setup, help others, for example, what Eric said, when we're starting the tune-up days, to help onboard others also to participate here. And I'd love to also start supporting 
starting plone developers on this team. Uh, I really like to give training, but we really need some experience on the website team first if we start this, because it's basically a resource issue. And also for plone integrators companies, like Eric said, uh, remember again this 10% community effort time. I mean, it's cool that all of you want to work on developing plone itself, but we also need a few hands to maintain plone.org and in some other teams do, do a bit of the grunt work there. So, the good news, this was the bad news. The good news, full CI CD is there. We have code commit CI CD, could deploy tests. Yes, we've got some more docs and things there, but basically everything is there to just start code commit and do some stuff. And if everybody says, oh, but, but you didn't ask for help. Uh, no, we were too busy to ask for help. I know, it's a chicken and egg problem. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your lightning talks. Um, I'll give the party announcement now. That's what, we, what you were expecting. No? Um, the party will be at 8 here next to the venue in a covered uh, square. Um, we invite you to um, leave the atmosphere in Eibar, to enjoy the atmosphere in Eibar today. There is a very good weather. People will, will be in the streets. There is a, a, a common thing that uh, people usually do on Thursdays here, that is gather with friends, go to bar, have a drink, have a chat. We invite you, everyone to do the same, and then gather here at 8. There will be a special event before the party, and after the event, uh, it will be just uh, half an hour. After the event, we will serve the dinner and have the party with the, our charming DJ, DJ Luis Cho, that you already know. So uh, we hope to see you at 8 here in the square next to the venue. Thank you very much. <laughs>